Good morning, sir. Good morning. We're finally doing something other than sanding and painting. Yahoo! So, we are mocking up stuff on the firewall today. Um, so, we just put a bracket on here for the brake booster. There we have the brake booster. So, this is a 8 inch dual diaphragm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we're just looking at this with the master cylinder. That thing sticks pretty far out there. I hope that isn't an issue. We'll see. Um, I think this thing's thicker than a factory master cylinder. Looks big. Yeah, it's pretty big. I don't know if there's an up on this. Look at it that way. Bolt there? Yeah. Don't yeah strip that one the other side. Don't strip, we have to put that one on. So. We don't? No. We're just mocking it up. Okay. Just don't lose it. video on all these components later. So this is just mock-up for now. We have the, I still can't really see in the video, the Willwood Master Cylinder. Wants to go there. And then um, we also have the proportioning valve and we're trying to figure out where we want to put that. And it can go on this side or this side. Brake lines. We got some brake lines too, but those are kind of right in the center right now. Which it's got a couple of that on now. This one we could bend around. This one we said. I think we're gonna let's try it on this side. See how it works. In theory. Who would use a such heavy duty plastic on their bags? <clears throat> there you go. The instructions to pop. Some. Yeah. Oops. It's some Chinese though. Better not be. second. All right, so we are discussing the brake lines here. Um, again, these are the, the factory lines which aren't really designed to work with this proportioning valve, but whatever. Um, so this guy, you can see him, yeah, uh, which comes from the passenger side. So that 
line right there ultimately has to end up over here. So I think this one we can just kind of twist it around and get it in the right place. This one, I believe, goes in here like so. And so A, it's pointing off in the wrong direction. And B, um, this line needs to be twisted that way. Um, these are the stainless lines. Um, so question for you guys out there, can you just manhandle these into the right position? We don't have to put new new bends into them. We just have to like change the bends that are there. So like this one, for instance, needs a 180 degree like that. Um, can you just take these and twist them or what? Or do you have to heat them or what, what's... What's the best way to do that? Um, I know you can bend them a little bit, I'm sure, uh, but you know, can I do a 180 on that without cracking it or putting stress fractures or something in it? Let me know. Uh, give you the tour of how all this looks. Looks pretty nice. It's not enough light here. We gotta get these lights hooked up here, Pops. Yeah. All right, so this is a Summit uh, Summit Racing uh, brake booster. Um, there's a bunch of brake boosters out there that basically look like this. They're similar. Um, this is a stainless steel bracket. Again, I got that from Summit. Uh, this is the Willwood uh, aluminum master cylinder, uh, matte black. You can see the proportioning valve goes here. It's got a little bracket that hooks it up to the uh, booster there. Um, allegedly, you can turn this around the other way. I'm not quite sure how that works. Um, I'm not sure about that. It looks like it only really wants to go this way. But um, So we're going to grab uh, one of the inner, inner fender wells here and just make sure the clearance is good on all of this here. But it looks pretty spiffy. Yeah? Let's go. So this is one of the debates we were having a, I don't know, a month or so ago when we were talking about chrome versus black and all that stuff, right? That's what I like the black hair. Right. So we don't want to overdo it with chrome. Um, this doesn't look all that poppy right now, but remember this is all going to be body color red or something over here, so hopefully that'll stand out a little bit more. Um, we are going to do the chrome pulleys, so it'll be a little bit of bling on the front of the engine, and then using kind of this uh, matte black kind of finish everywhere else in here, maybe on the fender wells, we still haven't decided on that. Anyway, let's go grab a fender well, see how it looks. Well, that's good news. I just dropped the camera and it still works. So um, this is obviously not in the right place here. So it needs to come up about six inches, but uh, plenty of clearance here. But the brake lines are going to have to kind of go off that way, potentially. Um, probably be OK, but that looks good. Um, so it doesn't look like there's any issues there. Now, another thing hopefully somebody out there can help me out with is this seal right here doesn't really seal to the firewall. I don't know if I can just take this thing and kind of stick it through there like that. Is that good enough? Maybe, maybe that is. Close the door? Yeah. Actually, leave it open. It's fine. It's not that cold now, so. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that, if there's a better boot for that or something that'll seal that, because obviously I don't want engine gases and stuff getting in here, so. Um, all right, so I forgot to put on the clutch master cylinder bracket, so I've got that on there now, so we'll figure out where we need to drill the hole for the clutch rod. All right, so we're trying to eyeball where this push rod is gonna wanna go through the firewall, so I just took a Sharpie and marked where that position is. Um, it comes up at a pretty steep angle, about 45 degrees or something. Um, so we're going to try just cutting a hole lined up with the top of that thing a little bit and see how it works. I always forget I have these things. I don't even know what they're called. It's perfect for this kind of stuff. We don't know how big that hole's supposed to be.
it's time for a new battery for that guy. I'll check it out. Alright, let's see how that fits though. So the other thing I was showing Pops, I bought the factory clutch boot thing for this um, and I'm hoping I can stick this on the inside of the car to use it to seal the firewall. So it doesn't really matter you know, what botching we do on that hole, we can, we're going to cover it up with that boot anyway from the, from the inside, but got to make sure that that's done in a way where water and stuff doesn't get in there. So we can all, we're asking you guys for help on that one. So a little bit of a pucker moment on this one. So the uh, powder code got down inside the holes on this thing so the bolts wouldn't go through. I was trying to use my tap and die set and trying to figure out what it was. Best guess was, what did I say it was? 5 sixteenths by 18, I think. Yeah, 5 sixteenths, 18. Um, but I couldn't run the die over this, but it seemed to line up with the tap, so I just took the 5 sixteenths by 18 tap and ran it through here. And that seems to be the ticket. But it's one of those, <laughs> I was telling the pop, well, we might be destroying this thing right now, so you can see it doesn't want to go in there very easily. Binds up. As we keep talking about, I have the drop seeds today. I keep dropping everything. There we go. Tell pops, I feel like a proper machinist when I have a uh -huh. tap or a die in my hand. I feel like a bomb. Who doesn't watch my channel? <laughs> Adam, I watch your channel. Watch my channel. around the other side of the firewall and see how this lines up. I don't know what that big bolt is for. We'll figure that out. Don't these washers over that? They will. Yeah, this is just a mock. So oh, I can, uh, can put together the pedals and everything today if we feel like it. Yeah, you can 
can see that's right. look from there. It's right at the top. So I definitely need to clean that out a little bit better. All right, as Pops and I are discussing, we can turn this into at least somewhat of an interesting video here. Um, so this is the McLeod Clutchmaster Cylinder Hydraulic Conversion Kit. Um, so one of the things they talk about is they want you to put a new pivot point onto the uh, clutch pedal here. Um, they give you a little stencil. Can you get that stencil out of there, please? And then we have to find our center punch because it disappeared. Oh, that little guy. So that theoretically goes there. Like so. Right side up, I guess. Something like that. So we've got to drill a hole right there. As we were discussing, the hole we need to drill, drill is a 3 8 and we were just using that on the firewall and it's extraordinarily dull, so that'll be fun. Um, so we'll start small and work our way up. Alright, so here's the main assembly here that holds all that stuff together. So we need to get this guy out and get the new one in. Alright, I think that's correct. Guy's yeah, gonna go like so. I'm yeah, we'll gonna stick it in the car, see if that works. All right, I think you can see there that that's still not quite right. There it needs to be up about here, and it's hitting right there. So we got to come up a little bit more. All right, that's all set there. It's not all tightened up or everything, but uh, you can see we have plenty of clearance there now. So that's good. All works. Pedal works. All right, so that one was pretty funny. I put the bracket on and I was like, hey, the bracket's hitting this thing. And I started grinding on the bracket and everything. And I finally realized the bracket was on upside down. <laughs> All upside down. Pops is laughing at me. Um, so you can see where I was grinding the top of this thing off. So I didn't need to do that because the bracket was on upside down. Anyway, so I'll just order another one of these. These aren't terribly expensive. Um, can't really see much that happened there anyway, but whatever. So just making sure that stuff fits, we'll go ahead and put the booster and everything back on now. Yeah, that all fits very nicely. So once you put the brackets on the right way, it's all good. So that's nice. Um, at least hopefully that doesn't hit the hood. Doesn't look like it will. Look, we're fine. So you can see how that goes together. Good, good. So yeah, so we just have the issues of sealing up these holes in the firewall there. Uh, where all that stuff goes. So I'll try putting the um, that boot on right there, see how that works. All right, so that's where that wants to go. So I think that'll work pretty well. Kind of seal that up like that. And I didn't want to just use a grommet or something because I didn't want it squeaking as the pedal goes back and forth. So this is this will follow the pedal. I can put a little um, hose clamp or something on here to clamp that down so it doesn't slip around. It comes right up against the uh, uh, harness right here. So, but I think it's okay. I have to find a way to mount it to the firewall. Good. All right, so we were just looking at the uh, cylinder, or reservoir rather, for the clutch master cylinder, trying to figure out where to put it. Um, it might fit right here, but I need to get the uh, windshield washer motor, which I bought, but I don't have it yet. Um, so it might fit right there. It will fit right here probably, but it'll be a tight fit. Um, if not there, then I'm not sure where we're going to put it, but that's that. So we're going to move on to the accelerator pedal now. All right, that fits up there pretty nicely. Um, I had to take the factory bracket off the side of this. Um, and there's one more hole I have to drill here, which I'm trying to figure out right now where that wants to sit. Um, so I'm trying to play around with that a little bit. Okay, yeah, that all fits. So I'll put the last bolt up there. We need to get some better bolts for this. I'll show you in a second, but uh, so clutch pedals in. Brake pedals in, 
you gotta put the linkages and stuff on the brake pedal to make sure that all lines up right. But it looks good, I think. So you see her here, after all the work we did to clean up the firewall, I don't want those things sticking out like that. So we'll get some nice ARP bolts or something and run, the, run them this way instead so you're just looking at the head of the bolt. Um, if anybody has any uh, suggestions on uh, what, what would be a good thing to fastener to use for that, let me know. These are like quarter inch by 24 or something, whatever. Uh, that kind of fastener, so. Yeah, so that all looks good. Happy with how all of that looks. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. I did order a windshield washer motor. That's going to be here on Wednesday, I think. I was surprised to find you can't get new ones of those. Really? No. Unless, and again, somebody on here let me know. I know Detroit Speed or something makes one. It's like $600. I don't want that one. But so all the ones are re refurbished. Well, you know, the guy that invented the intermittent speed on those took like 40 years to get his patent because everybody fought him. Hmm. All the auto companies. And they finally gave in, I think, five years ago. Wow. That's probably why you can't get them. <laughs> Could be. Um, anyway, I can't remember if my car came with it. I want to say it didn't. Um, since this was a drag car, they probably took that off, but I don't remember. And if it did, I threw it away long ago, so that was dumb if I had it. But like I said, I don't remember. All right, so this all looks good. So the next thing we're going to do is slap the wiring harness on here and get an idea of where we can run the, the stuff through. So, yeah. Or did I miss something? Do we have this? No, we're good. All right. On to the wiring harness. All right. It's not, I'm rather comfortable right I now. I know you are. And I got a sweater on. I'm so cold. All right. So there's the beast. The octopus. So we'll get that out, lay it on the floor, and figure out our plan. All right. I'm going to go research this later, but just in case anybody knows offhand here. Um, map sensor, I would assume, goes here. These are both three pin connectors, but that one does not want to fit there. Um, you know, this gen, which I'm assuming goes to the alternator or something. I don't know what that's for. I'll figure that out. And then the cam, I'm assuming this is a cam sensor since it says cam on it. Um, but it's a five pin connector. I believe this is the cam sensor pickup here. Well, that's a three pin connector, so that doesn't fit. Um, so I'm not sure about that, so we'll, we'll go do some digging on that, see if we can figure that out. If I do a Google search for cam sensor, it's a three pin. So I don't know what this goes to. And we're looking around trying to find a, a five pin connector anywhere, and I don't, I don't see one. Um, and that only leaves us with mass airflow sensor, which we don't have hooked up yet, so that's going to be floating. The gen wire, which we don't know what that's for. Um, this guy, like I said, which I think wants to go there. And then uh, there's a bunch of wires that have to go down to the knock sensors and all that stuff. So everything's accounted for here except for those wires. So like I said, if you guys know, great. If not, like I said, I'll, I'll be looking it up anyway. The instructions don't say anything about this. So um, Okay, so having said all of that, so this guy we want to run through the firewall inside somewhere if we can. Um, one interesting complication with that is this harness here is all stuff that needs to go inside the car. That's your uh, accelerator pedal, um, OBD2 port, all that stuff. So that has to go back into the car. So now the question is, do we leave this thing as is? So you have that going through the firewall and that going through the firewall in two places. Um, and then we're also left with the power module, the relays and all that stuff and where that wants to go. Um, so we'll see, maybe we'll stick that there. I don't really like that idea since we did all the work of cleaning the firewall. Um, but we'll play around with the wiring a little bit here and see where we end up. All right, so we just solved that mystery. There was a, a bag in there that said map jumper. There you go. So that solved that problem. I'll keep looking. Maybe there's something else in the box. That helps if you look in the boxes, so there's a jumper for this one, too. Why, I don't know. Why their wiring harness doesn't just bolt directly to the engine. Couldn't tell you, but whatever. So that's all good. All right, so we're all accounted for here. Um, the only one I wasn't sure about was this guy right here, which is the CLT. 
I'm assuming is a temperature sensor and it fits right into that little boss right there. So I'm assuming that's temperature sensor. So that's what we're going with for now. But everything else made sense. Um, all right, so now we'll look at the wiring here. All right, so here's what we're thinking. You guys can tell me what you think. So there's a spot right here on the firewall. Um, I found a grommet online um, made for this purpose for LS harnesses. So it's a two and a quarter inch hole, but the grommet's really small, so you can get all the big connectors and stuff through it, but still have a reasonably sized hole. So that'll fit right there. Um, and then the thought is run the uh, ECU, ECM, whatever you want to call it, um, stick it on top of that trans tunnel right there. So the wiring harness will be coming through right about there and then up in through here and connect it in there so I have to tuck all those wires up in there but I th think that'll be okay looks like it will be um, and then on the other side we have all of these wires here which I just stuck through the fused block right now um, so that's your OBD2 throttle position sensor and an ignition switch and what the other one was mill. I don't know what that is. Figure that out later. Um, so the idea was we could run those through here. I think this is for the clutch pedal, which we don't have anymore. Um, the existing clutch pedal. I don't know, so we have to plug that hole. Or if not, we can put another one of those big grommets right here and run everything through that hole. Um, that's kind of what we're thinking. And then that still leaves us the fuse block, power module, whatever you want to call it, um, which is pretty meaty. And so I'll take that out of the box and see what that looks like on the firewall. I'll take it from there. All right, well, that's upside down, but uh, I guess the wiring coming out that side. I um, don't really see how to mount this thing. All it has is that one mounting tab right there. It's kind of odd. It's offset. Really sure what that means. Um, again, I'll go digging around, see what I can find. Maybe we can put it down like this. Just, again, we're just trying to hide the wiring as much as possible. Um, I don't know. Leave it up to let you guys throw some thoughts my way. What you think? Because um, I don't really want this here, but. Uh, I don't, it doesn't really want to easily go inside the engine because so much of this stuff goes right into these harnesses here, which then you'd have to do a bunch of rewiring to get that up inside the car, I think. So let me know what you think. What do you think, Pops? Well, because the AC unit is inside that firewall, it's not a good place to put it. Yeah, you can't put it there. You can't stick this whole thing through the firewall, needless to say. Right, so you that want one. to disconnect all those wires. Uh, no, thank you. Um, so it seems well, some wires in here is going to be the place. Because yeah. Of the light that is wired. Oh, one, one other thing. Hang on. The other thing I've seen people do is stick it on here. Huh. Right. So instead of putting it there, you put it over here somewhere. Um, so the, the fender comes up to that line right there. So something like that. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do anything with that connector either. Um, we'll see. Uh, I don't know. That doesn't look terrible. We're going to have the heater hoses coming through here though, so that's going to be a problem. Hmm. I don't Still know. Still stick it there. You think it's okay? That's your opinion? Stick it back there? Yeah. Because of the curve to here and yeah. weird configuration there. Yeah, I know. So we just spent all that time making that firewall pretty you know, and cover it up. There you go. But that looked good. You can have the red against the black. Yep. And black. Alright. We'll figure it out. Put the cover back on it. So with the cover on, it would look something like that, which is not too bad. Um, we were just noticing all these little tabs on here. I don't know if those are maybe what you're supposed to use to mount it with. We'll, uh, we'll go digging around again, but that's not too bad. I mean, that seems, that's kind of what I was thinking we were going to end up with anyway. We just got to make sure we get 
this stuff up and out of the way so it's not getting too close to the exhaust. But yeah, I think it'll work. Yep. All right, you can set that down somewhere if you can without dropping it. Um, so that goes over there. We run the main loop through here, or loom. Um, and then the other one over here somewhere, we'll figure that out. Um, and it seems like everything fits there. So I think that's it for the firewall, right? Is there anything? Yeah. Other than um, windshield washer motor and the uh, reservoir for the clutch master cylinder, which we still have to figure out. But yeah, if we can get, that'll get these wires tucked down to about here somewhere. So just around the back of the engine, not too bad. That one we can run down pretty low there. Um, so I was telling Pops, I have to find some good pictures on how people tucked all this stuff up so it doesn't look like <coughs> garbage. Bless you. Um, okay. uh, if your people are wire tiring them to the fuel rails or something or what, um, figure that part out. I also got to get the fuel line over here too. Okay, I think that's it for today. I don't think we're going to take the car apart today. We'll save that for next time. Yeah. Cold. Not that cold. Damn. It's like almost 60 degrees. Ah, yeah, sure. And it's not. What? Uh, so, yeah, let me, uh, anybody have any thoughts on any of this stuff? Let me know what you think. Um, obviously, we're just kind of winging it here. I've looked at a lot of different pictures of how people have done this, and you know, that these two places seem to be the common place for that fuse block, so that seems to be it. But I haven't seen a lot of description on how people do the, the wiring loom there. Um, I know sometimes they try and run it way down under the tunnel, way down there, which is another option, but it's pretty tight in there on my car, so I don't really think that would work very well. Um, possibly, but that would be pretty tight. So I don't think we're going to try that. And plus it just kind of naturally wants to go there anyway, it seems to be the spot, so I think we'll go with that. All right, um, that's going to do it for today. Again, let me know what you guys think. Um, and we'll talk to you on the next one. Adios. Muchachos. Adios. Uh, I'll stick it in the shed for now. Okay. Later, Gator.